All right, so we're going to cover uh, two more deformers today. And I wanted to talk a little bit about <clears throat> the squash and stretch. That's this one right here. Uh, because it is one of the principles of animation, you know, this seems like a cool tool to be able to use that for, and you, you totally could. Uh, so first of all, with, with this primitive object, what I've done first is made uh, more segments. So you want to check that out when you're, when you're using the deformers. I want to make sure you add more segments. So with this cube, I'm adding 10, seg 10 segments per side to give it more geometry to squash and stretch. Uh, and then the way that squash and stretch works is, you know, when you pop it on here, nothing happens. And it seems kind of weird. There are all these different channels that you can adjust. But the main one that you're going to adjust is the factor. And so factor allows it to, you know, stretch and then also so above 100% is stretching out, and then below 100% is, is um, going to sort of squash it in, right? And so those variables come into play. And then <clears throat> the, the other thing that you can play with once you have some of these things in place are where it's positioned, where that squash and stretch is positioned, and then how much of the aspect and the... Um, expand and things like that that you can play with. So aspect has to do with how much it's going to be able to move one way or another. So you can see that as I'm stretched in, 100% is going you know in uh, pretty far. Less than that is going to not allow it to squash in too far. So you can adjust that kind of mode. Um, the other one, let's see. So let's just start at the top, I guess. So top has to do with where it's arranged, right? So, you know, how far down. So it's not affecting much of the top. Here it's affecting, affecting all of the top, you know, or most of it. Center, you can adjust the center. So if you just wanted the bottom to squish or just the top to squish, you could arrange that. So if it's towards the bottom and I adjust factor, then it's going to be just stretching the bottom a little bit. And we are getting into some geometry, so I could probably add more segments to make this smoother. Um, so that is the center, right? And then the bottom as well, you can adjust, you know, how much of the bottom gets affected by zooming that up and down. So you can squish that in or squish that out. Um, and of course this has to do with how, what the size of your object is as well. Um, expand has to do with how much that really happens. So if I bring this way up, then it's really going to squish in almost to like nothing, right? Really quickly. So that can be adjusted based on how much you want that to be affected. And, um, and then smooth start, I believe that has to do with, yeah. So how many like polygons it's really gonna be stretching as it kind of comes through. And then curvature, you're, you can adjust how much curve is happening. And again, if we added more polygons here, let's just ramp this up to like 20, 20 and then 20, then I'm gonna get a different kind of quality as I go through. So curvature is going to affect that as well. And now you see I've got a smoother sort of form. So you can imagine like, you know, using this, keyframing this to sort of have adjustments to it as if something hits the ground or, or bounces back up or having that kind of real wobbly sort of effect to it. So <clears throat> my recommendation with this would be um, kind of playing around with the factor a little bit. You know, oh, I have a keyframe on the cube. <laughs> so that's part of it too. So um, <clears throat> I'm just going to go to the animate mode. And when you're in this mode, if you open up the cube, I can delete the keyframes so that it will um, just affect those things. So for example, if I was going to use squash and stretch here, I might just go to factor and start it out at 100%. And that's going to be pretty much nothing. Uh, so then what I could do is um, go up, you know, could, uh, take this object and let's see, I'll just move it, move the cube up, all right? Keyframe it, go to 50. I'll drop it down a little bit, keyframe that, All right? So I've got this motion so far, like it's dropping. And, um, and then with squash and stretch, what I could do is start out with this thing. And then maybe at 20, it starts to stretch in a little bit, just a little bit. 
so I can auto keyframe that. Let's see. Let's go back. Oops. What did I do? <laughs> so I can. Uh, let's start with this at 100%. So if I hit the auto keyframe, I click on factor. Okay. It's going to drop a keyframe in for me. If I go to 20. I can take the factor and bring this down, let's say like 90. Oh, I'm sorry, let's bring it up to 120. And that's going to stretch it out a little bit. Uh, and then as I go to 50, I may want to go the opposite direction, like down to let's say 80. And that's going to start to give me that a little bit of like expand sort of motion. So if I go back, this is going to like stretch out. It's going to hit the ground and kind of like stretch out a little bit. So between those nuances, you can start to get things that really become really fluid. And by movement and stretch, you can really get a lot of um, action kind of coming back and forth. So again, with this, whoops, you want to think a little bit about how you're, you're using motion along with the squish, squish and stretch to give different parameters sort of coming through. All right. So that is, um, let's go back to our standard menu. So that is the squash and stretch. Um, and then one more that I'm going to talk a little bit about is this one called Jiggle, which I like a lot. So, <clears throat> and definitely can explore this further, but I'm just going to, let's see, let's get, actually, let's get rid of our animations. That's the thing. All right, I'm going to delete all this stuff, turn auto keyframes off and go back to the start and go back to our standard. Okay, with this one, so with Jiggle, uh, there's a lot of different things you can do with it, but just the basic sort of thing that you can do, which I think is really helpful, is, um, is add this in, right? And then when it's in place, it's going to kind of like soften some of your motions and add a little bit of extra movement to them. So just as a quick example, if we were to... Um, on the cube itself, move it. So I'm just gonna pop a keyframe in at this, at this state, and then we will move forward 50 and move it this way. You're gonna see like it's not moving and that seems to be really weird, but we're gonna hit, hit a keyframe in. And then when we play this, you see that it, it gives a little bit of that kind of like bounce back and forth. Like it sort of goes forward and it goes back just ever so subtly kind of in the, in the form. So that can be a nice way to kind of give a little bit of that extra kind of movement that sometimes happens. And you can adjust um, the stiffness and the strength and the structural sort of thing. So all of these sort of things can, can affect how, how the form gets uh, rendered. So if we do, um, like if we ramped up this to 200% instead of 100%, then we should see more of that kind of back and forth. Yeah, so you've seen as it stops, it kind of moves back and forth just a little bit, which is a nice little additional touch that automates some of that sort of motion. Uh, stiffness, if we, if we did, let's see, less stiffness, I believe, so I went down to 15, then we should get a little bit more, yeah. See, there's a little bit more fluidity with that motion. It's kind of like dragging forward, it's, you know, has that sort of drag, and then as it sort of tilts back and forth, uh, it becomes that that sort of form. So there's a lot more to play along with this. You can do different um, restrictions and forces and all kinds of stuff like that that become really interesting with this. But it can be a great way to add uh, sort of secondary motion to things as they move back and forth. So if you're thinking about movement and timing or exaggeration or any of these sort of things, you may want to use that uh, some of these deformers to help kind of compress them in um, and, and work with those motions a little bit more.